This week we've taken you on a roller coaster journey as Randolph County wife and mother Lindsay Cox learns how her family is connected to the Randolph County based and formerly enslaved Lytle siblings. She isn't the only one making discoveries though. As Fox 8's Jordan Brown shows us, another descendant on the other side of the country had been knee deep in this research decades before Lindsay started. Some of Lindsay Cox's days are spent here. A library card is very helpful. In the Randolph room of the Ashboro Public Library where she researches her family history. For me, personally, the story begins with Frank. It was sometime in 2020 when DNA tests revealed Lindsay's husband, Chad, and their children are direct descendants of a formerly enslaved black man, Frank Lytle. And they had several family matches all over the country. Start reaching out to people who are matches, um, getting a little bit of information, digging a little more. I came across uh, an email address for a man named Rick Vigeland. Another Lytle descendant, family historian and genealogist Rick Vigeland, has been on the other side of the country researching the Lytles for the last 40 years. My grandpa was three days old when his mother died. She was a Lytle, and he was adopted by his father's side of the family. So Lytle was just kind of a big mystery, and that got me going. At 14, Rick was in one of the local genealogy clubs in his hometown, Springfield, Oregon. It was one of those clubs that he first discovered he had enslaved black ancestors. That was this very time in high school, and I was reading the 1830 census. And in the 1830 census, the families are only listed by head of household and just by a number of marks, how many children under five, five to 10, 10 you know, all the way up to 100. There's these age categories. And I'm reading the census, and here it is, Frank Lytle Sr. And some of his kids are nearby, as it turns out. And five to 10, no marks, no marks, no marks, nothing. Females, no marks. It's like, well, how do you have a household without any people in it? So it's on microfilm, so you scroll over, and finally there's some marks in this far column. And it's like, well, what are these marks for? You know, the number of children and so on. So you scroll back in the microfilm, back to the top of the page, and the column headings said, free colored. That was just the beginning. From there, Rick set out to find more family. As soon as recreational DNA testing became available, he took one. Eddie was my first African-American match. Eddie is Edward Carter Sanders, Zebulon, North Carolina resident, descendant of Frank Lytle, and Rick's fifth cousin once removed. Like Rick and Lindsay, Eddie was also curious about his lineage. With the job at the North Carolina Court of Appeals, Eddie was fortunate to have access to the state archives where he'd spend his lunch hours pouring through documents, looking for his ancestors. So you always felt this sense of trying to figure out who you were. Right, right, that's right. That was important to me. I'm a firm believer that sometimes I feel like your ancestors, they want to be found, they want, they want you to know them. Also, like Rick and Lindsay, Eddie learned of his Lytle connection through DNA testing, only then learning he had white ancestors. You find out you're a Lytle, you find out how you're a Lytle, who you're related to. Mm -hmm. When you meet Chad Cox for the first mm -hmm. time, your mm -hmm. cousin, mm -hmm. and, and your other cousins, your other yeah. white cousins, oh, yeah, yeah. what was that like seeing these people that in some cases you look nothing like, right. but they're knowing they're your family? Right, that's right. It, it's a feeling, you know, it made me feel more like an American. Sometimes African Americans, we could be made to feel a little bit less American, you know? Yeah. We feel, it's almost like we're on the fringes, you know? But when you feel like you met, you know, your, or, or say for instance, when I met my Native American relatives, my, my Native American relatives, it made me feel like, you know, hey, you're a part of this great country. Well, my first reaction was almost a little sadness that he had felt anything else before that time. To me, you look at the diversity of the descendants to this day, that's, that's the story of America. And that anyone would feel excluded uh, is kind of sad. 
After years of talking online, Eddie and Rick finally connected in person in 2015. They've stayed in touch over the years as the family continues to grow in size and diversity. Somebody might say, well, why you want to find, why you want to be connected to a, a family of, you know, slave owners or whatever? It is what it is. I can't, I didn't, I didn't do it. They didn't do it. <laughs> you know, we're trying to do something different. We're actually trying to find each other. Jordan Brown, Fox 8 News. Just amazing connections there. We'll pick up the Lytle family story next week as Jordan takes you to the only cemetery in Randolph County where Lytle's are buried.